When I started to fall in love with turntables and analog reproductions, the first things that I did was to upgrade my internal form stage. I mean, the quality was okay, but nothing special. I upgraded with the i5 form stage. Great value for money review coming soon, but subscribe to the channels to support my work. So the difference in the sound quality moving from the internal form stage of the turntable to the external one, also ugly affordable like the i5 form stage, difference like night and day. So absolutely is the first thing that you should do if you're still using an uh, internal phono stage. And today we are going to review this beautiful phono stage from the Italian company Gold Note. Founded in the beautiful Firenze in 2012 by CEO Maurizio Terini, they just celebrated the 10th anniversary. With a complete line of digital and analog equipment designed and manufactured in Italy, Gold Note is today sold in 50 countries over the world. And now let's take a look of the PH10. PH10 is the entry level phono stage of Gold Note, followed by the PH1000 reference series. The Gold Note PH10 is a half size rack, how you can see, very small. And if you have something like this rack, this IKEA red, IKEA, I don't know how you call it, 25 bucks <laughs> rack that I did it, self made, beautiful because I love it. I can put my turntable, half size rack, I have my amplifiers and my records here now. On the top, you can find this beautiful big Gold Note logo. They also use during record change to place my stabilizer. It fits just perfect, I'm joking. And about the logo that has this G shape, it's actually an ancient Roman horn corn and was a brace war trumpet and was used to communicate during the battles that was really noisy. So really interesting. A metallic chassis that look really solid and I love this shark shape. Something to say also about the fits that I found a little bit cheap and most of the time I also lost some of them. So the interface is really user friendly. A really clear color display and actually with a firmware upgrade you can watch Netflix also here. I'm joking. So power on off buttons and the same knob we use it to navigate in the menu. So with one knob you do just everything. It's really intuitive and easy to use. We have the possibility to choose between input 1 and input 2. If you have, for example, two turntables or two arms, you can just connect it to one phono stage. Absolutely amazing. The phono stage is compatible with moving magnet and moving coil cartridges. And we have also the possibility to change the gain from minus three to plus six. So it really has all the power that you need to fit any cartridges. We can select the load for the moving coil cartridges from 10 ohm to 47 kilo ohm. And that's something absolutely beautiful because 10 ohm is a very low impedance and it will give you access to probably 99% of the cartridges. Poor impedance matching between a moving coil cartridge and a amplifier can cause a not natural frequency response. So really important, if you don't know how much must be, just take a look of the specs of the cartridge. If you want to know or have more details about it, just let me know and I will do a dedicated video for it. Moving magnets has a fixed capacitance load of 220 picofarad, if I'm not wrong, it's not possible to change it and should be fine with most of moving, moving magnets cartridges, so absolutely no problem. And in the end we have the six equalizations curves. That's probably the most beautiful parts of the PH10, something really unique. Because record from early vinyl eras used other standards that differs from what was later established by the Recording Industry Associations of America. And the concept was that in the records, the treble, for example, was raised in order to gain some distance from the groove noise and the low was drastically lowered in order that the grooves doesn't take up too much space. The engineers at DECA Records in England and Columbia, US, decided for themselves where exactly and with what steps this filter will be applied. So amazing that the PH10s it's offered the three most popular equalization scores. 
and each of them can be also an ancient, also known like Newman time constant, that takes into account the fact that the recording equalizer of the cutting machines could limit the top end outside human frequency spectrum's range to prevent the cutting head from being overloaded and maybe damaged. So basically, when we enable the enhanced, we apply a inverse filters of this cutting process that can result in an extended high frequency uh, response up to 50 kilohertz and an improvement of the dynamics and of the sound stage. On the back we can find two RCA input and one unbalanced RCA and balanced XLR output. We have also the possibility to connect a external power supply, the PS10, to be purchased separately to enhance the performance if you would like. I personally didn't test it, I don't have it here, so I cannot tell you if it's true or not, but something that I learned from turntable world absolutely is that the power supply and is something really important. It's not absolutely a snake oil. I had a problem when I was, for example, connected my turntables. I had the RCI cable that is coming out from the turntables was closer to a 220 volt here in Europe is a 220 volt for the power nets was closer to these cables and I had noise coming out from the speaker. I separated them, noise was gone. So here power supply in front of stage we are speaking about very low voltage is really important. Absolutely. The audio pad is full analog and use discrete audio grade components together with sealed single switches. The management of the digital interface together with the firmware is separated from the analog part and take places on a dedicated board with a dedicated microcontroller. PH10 is designed also to avoid micro switches allowing settings in real time. The power supply is linear and is made also in Italy from a specialized suppliers on a gold node specifications. Set up and use the PH10s is a easy game. I connected to my turntables, my reference project RPM9. And then I went out with RCA cables from here to my preamplifier, the Cambridge Audio H and Q that was driving my Macintosh power amplifier MC312 connected to my reference speaker, the Sonus Faber Serafino Tradition. The project RPM9 is fitted with the Ortifon Quintet Bronze, beautiful cartridges, really romantic. And I tested also the PH10 with a beautiful Denon DL103 moving coil cartridges with a low output voltage signals and that's absolutely beautiful because it sounds natural with a good warm sound and a good dynamic and has a affordable price. Then we have the gold ring E3 moving magnet cartridges and this is probably slightly warm especially on the bass. It has this bass that is really full. Another beautiful cartridges that is the Ana SL, also moving coil cartridges. And this is, is energetic, it's crispy, slightly bright. So the PH10 was definitely tested in many setup configurations and I had absolutely any problem to drive any of these cartridges from the really low one, like the Denons, till the more refined Ana SL. We'll review it all, don't worry about it, because I think I love to review cartridges, because all cartridges has just a different sound, absolutely beautiful. So first record that I test was Mobile Fidelity 
original master recording Frank Sinatra live at the Sands. I will not say nothing more about it, mobile fidelity. I did a video about it, just take a look of it. I will let it in the description. This one I found it on this cox and is pretty unique, hard to find it and was in top condition. 1966 Las Vegas live album of Frank Sinatra with Count Bass Orchestra, Quincy Jones arrangement. The PH10 was cleaning, giving me a speciousness presentations that make me feel like I've been fully right into the casino where the Sinatra and orchestra performed. I felt in the 60s with the people around me cheering. What I really appreciate was Sinatra voice that was really deep and vibrating through my Serafino with authority and energy. Brace instruments and drums never overwhelmed Sinatra voice. PH10 did an amazing job, nothing was emphasized, the soundstage was ultra deep and pretty wide and I really enjoyed it. Next we have Dire Straits, Brother in Arms, Abbey Road Studio Recording, half speed 45 RPM and really funny because every time I play it I forget it is 45 RPM and it starts really slow. Mark Knopfler's vocal was rendered faithfully in the center of the stage with good energy and a stable imaging. And I have to say that I spin it first with my dual CS518 that was fitted with the Ana SL that in my opinion is too bright for these records and the sound was slightly metallic and the drums just sounds, the snare of the drums sounds, yes, absolutely, a little bit bright. I moved to the quintet and everything was just fine. So far away, guitar intro was full of vibe with the good details and with the just correct amount of crispness on the picket strings. And here I have to say that I felt a little bit of lack in transient response speed, especially compared to my reference Parasound GC3+. Plus. The intro drums was slightly more energetic and a little bit more faster. So it giving me this feeling that here was a little bit slightly slower. But anyway, I enjoyed the overall vibe with the Dire Straits records. But yes, I felt that was slightly laid back. I tested also some records from Deutsch, Gramophone, Seong, Jincho, Piano, Debussy and John Williams, The Berlin Concert. And test the gold one that it look amazing, really beautiful, but it sounds not good. Nothing to do with the PH10s, but just the pressing of these records was terrible. It's noisy, I don't like how it sounds. The only records of Deutsch Grammophon that I found was sounding really good was Roger Eno, Turning Year. Absolutely beautiful. It's a shame because I think records like that deserve a better quality. Anyway, I'm not here to complaining about the pressing, but what I found interesting with these records is the ability of the PH10 to make records that also doesn't have a good pressing to sound good. And that's something that I noticed only in the PH10. And if a record has a bad pressing on the Parasound, it will just sound terrible. But the PH10, especially this one, Debussy, it has the ability to make any single piano notes sound more alive, beautiful and less fatigue. So it's hard to explain, but the PH10 is, sounds to me that is heading this touch of grain and saturation to the mid-range, make it any record sounds beautiful and pleasant. Next we have Kind of Blue, UHQR release. I have to release of Kind of Blue, this one highly affordable. So difference between the two, oh, here, here I have to say something. When I start first time to listening for records, I always said I don't want any turntables, I don't want any records, I don't want to clean records. Wah, what's that? And then with what I'm doing, I had to review amplifier and amplifier had the phono stage, right? 
so I had to speak about the phono stage and if you don't have our turntables so okay I had my first turntable I started listening for records I bought this ultra high quality release and then wow guys I say what's that what sounds to me better than any digital release I'm not joke and I compared this release actually with DSD I compared it with Tidal I compare it with Kobuts, forget about it. The sounds of this UHQR is unbelievable. And that's not a sponsor, this I bought it, I spent a lot of money for this release. So what is the difference? Take so what, everybody knows so what, right? Soundstage with the PH10 was holographic and deep, making the speaker disappear completely. Separations was impressive. I noticed especially on the left between Bill Evans and Coltrane. Overall tonality was balanced, with any emphasizations between instruments. Miles Davis' trumpet was smooth, never fatigued, on high notes. Coltrane's tenor sax was big and natural. Paul Chambers' bass line was present in the whole song without never disappearing from the scene, hidden by instruments ahead. Jimmy Cobb drums and especially cymbals were natural with a realistic decay and never too high. Julian Altosax had a lively tones that never becomes shrilling or annoying. Okay, I don't want to say too much about it. Try it and just let me know. And here we have to speak about this release that it still sounds good. Here we can speak about the enhancing. So we have the possibility to use the enhancing release to give, as I told you, a extended frequency response. And when I enabled with these records, I improve the sound stage and everything just become more lively. So absolutely a beautiful options of the PH10. Next record, and I promise that I'm finished. Should I say which one it is? Absolutely not, right? So, Pink Floyd. <laughs> Remastered from the original analog tapes by James Guthrie, Joel Plante, and Bernie Grandman. So, interesting these records with other phone stage amplifier tape here. It has a slightly noise surface issue, but with the PH10, was slightly more clean. So something that I really appreciate. And take the song, Speak to Me, the heartbeat intro was generally with other amplifier too much boomy in my room. Something that didn't happen on the PH10. I felt that on the PH10, the sub bass is a slightly rolled off. And this I felt it also in kind of blue bass line when Paul Chambers especially is playing with Bill Evans together. My feeling was that on the PH10 there was a slightly less textures. So could be that this subsonic filter of the PH10 is connected with what I felt? I don't know, probably yes, probably not. But something interesting that I found on the specs, looking at the specs of the gold note, if you take the PH1000, that is the reference from stage of gold note, you have the possibility to enable or disable the subsonic filter, something that you not have on the PH10. That is probably my only concern regarding this phone stage. Uh, one thing I don't like also of this record, you see this fingerprint? So it's beautiful, but... So I compare the PH10 with SPL phone stage that is really close in the price range and with the more expensive Parasound JC3 Plus designed by the legendary Chung Curl. And the first thing is that the PH10 is more versatile. It's giving you the possibility to just do everything. Regarding the sound quality, if we compare it with the SPL timber on the mid-range of the gold note is absolutely the best one, also compared with the Parasounds, no way to beat the PH10. I like this way that the PH10 is presented to you any records with this ability to improve also records that are not good pressed with this little bit of saturation that probably is colored 
slightly, a little bit, and this slightly grain giving to instruments and voices something that, in my opinion, is missing in the analog reproductions. SPL probably could be, for most of you, something good or not, but is projecting instruments and voices slightly on your face. So more aggressive, more energetic, more impact, but timber of instruments and voices, it just sounds more, more natural and realistic. On the Parasound, as I say, if a record is pressed bad, it will sound bad. Parasound is more resolving. There is one record. I have it here. Beautiful press from reference recording. Alt speed mastered 180 gram virgin vinyl. It is absolutely a unique experience and it sounds really good. On the Parasound, it has this ability to separate instruments, especially on a big sound stage, orchestra, big sound stage, in a unique way. And he's doing this with an energy and an impact that is just absolutely impressive. So the PH10 is definitely slightly more laid back. But regarding the timbre of voices and instruments on the PH10, wow. It's more about to find a good tuning, like in instruments, and they did it. So two things that I would like to see from Gold Knot is a remote control, also something small, have the ability to just sitting on the couch and switching between the equalization scores and the impedance, load impedance, to just is something good, you know? You don't have to stand up every time. So definitely the remote control could be a game changer. A PH100, why not with a remote control or a smart app with the possibility to um, disable the subsonic filter. And I would like to see more authority and textures in the bass. The more time I spent with the PH10, the more I love it. And mainly because it provided a most complete emotive and engaging sound, a best buy in the price range. It play everything and does it with a touch of unique intimacy that make it a perfect choice with a varied record collection. So it's definitely a phone stage that you want to listen to. Don't call it entry level. It's the entry level of Gold Note, but it sounds absolutely not like an entry level. From Ed Audio is everything. I hope you appreciate my video. I try to keep it not too much long. I hope it. I still have to editing. I hope that it's less than 20 minutes. We'll see. From Ed Audio is everything. Subscribe to the channel to support my work and see you soon. It was like a we tried to make me feeling blue something but you so see through something just stay right by you Time. You want my love?